Hi, everyone. We're going to get started. Um, I just want to say welcome. Um, I love seeing this crowd here. There's like a great mix of RAs, trainees, scientists. I think that this session is really important for all groups. Um, and I guess I should introduce myself. I'm Grace Park. I'm the program coordinator of the Research Training Center. So this session is being put on by us, the Faculty Development Office, as well as in partnership with CCHCSP, who I'm sure most of you know is running their conference over the next two days, today and tomorrow. So Fabiola is here with us uh, on behalf of CCHCSP, but has graciously um, added this workshop for you guys um, as an add to her conference stops. So I'll just give you a kind of brief biography of Fabiola before she gets started. So Fabiola Soros is a biologist from the Universidad Federal de Santa Catarina, um, as well as the Universidad de Coimbra. Sorry. <laughs> so she worked in biochemistry and bioinformatic uh, laboratories with protein characterization and in silico studies of the family of fatty acid binding proteins. Um, she's now also studying journalism um, at UFSC with an emphasis on scientific journalism. So obviously perfectly suited for this seminar. Um, she works at Mind the Graph, which this... Um, which is the online platform that she'll be discussing near the end of this session as well. Um, writing about design and science, um, how to create graphical abstracts, and how to use images uh, that can improve your communication in science. If you haven't had a chance, check out the blog at blog.mindthegraph.com. There's amazing um, videos and archives there that she has put together that will be a really nice complement to today's session. So please join me in welcoming Fabiola. Yes, yes. Okay, great, thanks. Okay, good afternoon, and thank you all to being here. I hope this will be a good talk to you. So my goal here is to help you to learn how to do amazing graphical abstracts and poster to your presentations and with scientific illustrations. So first, <laughs> I, <laughs> I had a... I introduced myself, but Grace already did this, so I will just pass to the next one. So to start, I want to talk to you about uh, why we need to improve our communication in science and to general audience and with other scientists. So to start, how people do science, right? So we are, we are all scientists and we are like, smarter people and not normal people. We live in laboratories and this is the image you normally have with other people. But we are just normal people. We know that. So the other people need to know that as well so you can so we can communicate better with them. So I want to start with this quote is like they cheer me because they all understand me and they cheer me you, they cheer you because no one understand you this quote is from Chaplin to Einstein and it's like we need to change that we need that people understand science and understand scientists because it's not just believe in me, I'm a scientist, I know what I'm saying, so shut up and, and listen to me. We need to talk better with people. This is a gift from Stratwick. It's like, <laughs> okay, this is not true, right? We are not like that, but this is like uh, fiction movies and TV shows show to people what are scientists. But this is a problem. Uh, mostly because now we are living in a post truth era. It's a lot of text and research about it. So many people are believing more in social media and Twitter and YouTubers than scientists. So we have a lot of problem with that because we are doing a lot of research and we have a lot of data and no, no, no one knows about that. So we have a lot of this data and people just go to YouTubers and believe in another thing. So 
This is a great article about the post era in science. So this quote is, a person can be too right to believe whatever comes across on Twitter, on face and Facebook, and too dismissive of a consensual achieved by careful patient skilled investigation by trained scientists. This tends to emerge when emotions come to play. And the power of Twitter and Facebook to spread untruths is part of what characterizes our objective inquiry denying a post truth world. So, this thing about not believing science or not believing facts, uh, it's already exists in the past, but social media increased this a lot. And one of the problems of that is our funds is going down because people don't see the importance of science. So why I will give my money and government money to scientists? I don't need them. I don't know what they are doing. So I will not give my money to them and we are losing our funds. The other problem is as people are not believing us, we are losing many fights. Vaccination is one of them, is a, a red, a lot discussed subject, but it's a problem. I am a Twitter person, so I brought to you a lot of Twitter uh, examples of what parents and no people are saying about vaccination, and this is real Twitter. So this is not the only two on Twitter, there is a lot about it. So it's a big problem. And it's out of social media as well because kids are really dying because of it. So it's like we have all this knowledge, we have the vaccines, we have all this red, but still some kids are getting disease and are dying because of this. So this is not a problem of research. We'll have, we'll have read the solution. We just need to communicate better so people can use our knowledge. And I read a lot of about the Italy problem with vaccination. So there is a lot of pressures uh, on the government to the kids don't need to be vaccinated to go to school. So there's a lot of pressures from parents, from media, and from a lot of different persons, but I didn't find anything about science, like what science are saying about this problem in Italy, uh, interviewed scientists. So we need to be part of this discussion. We need to be on the table, you know, we need to do interviews and people need to know our vision, scientific vision about this stuff. It's not, about, it's not just about government and parents, but what are we doing to that? We are doing this. So this is a little boring. And yeah, for us it's boring, for, but to general audience it's more than that. It's really hard to understand. So we have this to explain to parents and to people why they need to vaccinate their kids. So well, we are not being successful. And there is a research that only 10% of published papers are read by more than three people. And the average cost to produce and, produ and publish a paper in the United States is $100,000. So we are spending $100,000 to publish a paper that will be read by three people. Yeah, this is a big problem, right? And Miyotai, we have a lot of YouTubers. So this first video proves that Earth is flat and had, and had almost 2 million views. And the other one is a parent proving that vaccines cause autism and has more than 24,000 views. So our papers are read by three people and these videos are seen by almost two million people. So we are losing this battle, okay? We need to change that. 
So this is a cartoon that explain and summarize a lot of what I'm trying to say to you. This is the first part. And what do you do? We produce really good data and research, and we have really good knowledge. And we saw black holes picture. We are curing, curing a lot of diseases. And we write all of this in past century format in our computers. And worse than that, we package all this in a 7th century format that is the scientific paper. So this is a big problem because scientific paper uh, was a really big revolution in the cent uh, 17th century, but it's passed like 300 years for now. So we need to create a new revolution. Uh, I work a lot of with bioinformatics, and we have 3D models of proteins and videos of dynamics of proteins uh, binding ligands. So it's really hard to explain this in a scientific paper because we have 3D images and videos. So a lot of knowledge is missed because the way we are publishing that. So yeah, it's a big problem. And besides that, we produce a lot of knowledge. And per year, according to PubMed, are publishing a million two thousand dollars, a million two hundred thousand per year new papers. So no one can read that. Yeah, I believe no one here read a lot of it. But there is an ocean of information. It's really hard to get the information we want. So there is a lot of this, this, this. Yeah. And this is uh, harder to the reader because we need to select the information we, we want from our field. And this is a problem to the authors too because when we publish a paper, we want, we want that people read our paper. So, so to people read our paper, they need to find it in this ocean of information. So how they can find our paper, our work, there is a lot of solutions, there is a lot of, a lot of ideas, and today I will present you an idea uh, to be more visual, to use visual science as a new approach. It's not the only solution for scientific communication problems, uh, we have a lot of ways to do that, but visual science is a good way and is my expertise, so I will talk today with you about it. So I look for scientific data that visual science helps us to understand better and to communicate better, and I found this interview with the head of Max Planck Society, and it's a really good interview. Uh, it's a video interview, and he talked a lot about visual science and use art and illustrations to explain and to talk with, about science with other people. And what, one quote of this interview is, we need to visualize to understand. There are images in your brain. It's like when we do experiment and when you plan a methodology or a hypothesis, we visualize in our mind, right? And we need to pass this to other people so can visualize as well and can understand. So I think we already know this in common sense. So it's a little task. Imagine you all go to Brazil and you are at a bar and drinking beers and you need to go to a restroom. What restroom do you choose? Okay, so raise your hands who you choose the first one door, just to see how you, the first one door, who you choose the second door. Okay, a lot of people know that, yeah, but if you find this, it's really easier, right? 
So images help us a lot to understand, and we do that in our real life day by day, but in science, we still struggle with that. So this is, um, this is an interview and an article from The Economist, and the cita citations numbers of papers, and a paper which charts has plus 6% more views and citations than only text paper, and a paper with a diagram, that means an infographic, a chart, has plus 120% more views than only text paper. So this is other stud about it, it is about the visibility uh, of papers of one edition of magazine Frontiers in Cellular and Infection Microbiology. So each column is one paper of the same edition of this magazine, and you can see the numbers of the paper's views of each article. So we can see that the last article has a huge difference of views. There's a lot more views, so it's a difference. And the difference is that this paper is the only one that has an infographic inside. And this is the paper, and this is the infographic. So it's a simple infographic. It's not rocket science, but it's beautiful, it's clean, and help to understand. So improve a lot of the views of the papers, so it's really helpful to us as scientists to use tools like that to explain our methodology and our results. This is other example, this is from MindGraph, but I will tell you about MindGraph later. This is an article about a Parkinson's disease. So in the first one, only text, what is highlighted? You, what, what you can see at the first side, like just the headline and the author's name maybe. But in the second one, you can get the main information. So you can see it's about the brain, has a chart with a significant difference, is about elderly people. So you can get more information of, from the graphical abstract than from only paper text only text paper. Uh, graphical abstracts uh, are, good to, are good as well to be seen. So a lot of magazines has this index of graph with, gra gra sorry, with graphical abstracts. So you can search and you can choose your, your paper, the paper you want to read by the graphical abstract. So this is really helpful. But it's better when your graphical abstract is attractive, is eye-catching. OK, this time I believe I already convinced you. We need to be visual. I hope so. But we are not designers, right? Uh, we don't learn how to use Adobe softwares and how to create illustrations, how to draw. We don't need, we don't learn this in college. We don't have cl classes about it. But we need to do that. We need to improve our communication. So, when we will create a graphical abstract, we have like this in mind. So, oh, okay, I want to create a graphical abstract. I want to do something like that. This is from Nature Reviews. It's really beautiful, it's clean, and explain a lot. But when we, when we actually do the graphical abstract, it's more like that, maybe. <laughs> this is what we can do, right? So we have these expectations, and we do like that. <laughs> we have these expectations, and we do like that. So, yeah, it's not easy. We normally find illustrations from... <laughs> Yeah, but it's not our fault because it's hard to find properly tools. We don't have the skills, and we are learning. We start learning learning to create this graphical abstract. So this is normal, but you can do better than that. So, 
how to create eye-catching graphical abstracts in three steps. This is the methodology we use in MindGraph to create a graphical abstract. MindGraph is an online platform for scientists and we have designers and programmers and biologists. So we work together to create a methodology to create graphical abstracts and posters and presentations. So these three steps we use in MindGraph and I will help you to use the same methodology today. The first one, you need to summarize your content because we have a lot of data okay, doing research and we are attached to our data, we love them. So we want to pass all of our information to other people in our papers and graphical abstracts and presentations. So normally when I ask, oh, what is important? What is your main information? What needs to be in your graphical abstract? Oh, everything. <laughs> but we need to learn how to summarize. And sometimes this is painfully. So we need to, we need to choose what is more important and what is your reader or your audience needs to go home knowing. So, <laughs> yeah, what is important of your data? So, we need to move from that to that, okay? This will help you to create your graphical abstract. So, Normally, when, when people go, will go a graphical abstract, they just grab their papers and go to the platform and, okay, I will put all these illustrations together and take like two days to create one because you have a lot of information, you don't know what to use. So, when you already have the summarized content, it's really fast, you can do it in like two hours. So, you need to do this step first. This is the methodology we use, so I think it's great to create. The pink part, the pink box, is your burning problem. So, it's the main question your infograph must answer. So, where people need to go home knowing. The second one is supporting questions. So if you have space and time, you can talk more about why you're doing, what you're doing, so you can play, you can play more and better. And the third one, the last one, it's more information, it's just supporting information. So to do a poster, to presentation, the first one, your main information, will be the headline and the illustrations, the graphical abstract. So when people are walking close to your poster, they will see the headline and the illustrations. So are people that just walk or, or had a, a see at the first sight, they will catch this information, is the most important information. But if a person gets curiosity to know more about it, they will be more closer and will read the text. So the text is the second box. And then they can read and get more information. But if they really like your work, your post, poster, they will talk to you, they will ask for the paper, they, they will read more, so it's your last box, your last space, so you can talk about more. So you will not reach people in the same way, you have people that has more interest and people that just to see the main information and you need to separate that. The second step is to draw a sketch and organize the elements. So before you go to the platform, before create that, put in your mind what you want to do because it can be really confused to go and try to create and oh my God, I don't know if I put this illustration or this other and you spend a lot of time. So you need to do a sketch. This is a real sketch that our designer Renato uh, he made before to create a graphical abstract. So he has a notebook, he's always drawing, oh, I want to put the neuron here, I want to put the cell in the other, other side. 
So he do a lot of this, and then he do at Mindograph. So it helps a lot and save a lot of time. This is the difference. So to help you, this is a chart of what you trying to say to your audience or to your reader. So when you summarize the information, you find that you found that you want to point uh, some some cells, some organ, some tissue. So you go to the localization way. You you do a graphical abstract about localization. If you want to show an action, a timeline, a process, you do the second one. You show a process, a timeline, and this you need arrows. You need to be you need to be clear that one step is after the other step. And the last one, the arrangement, is when things are connected and you want to show the connection between them. So this is an example from MindGraph of a timeline. So it's it's clear to see that it has several steps. It's highlighted uh, with the colors and with the center of the graphical abstract. This is other example, so you can see clearly that one step is after the other. This show a process as well. And this is other example of process. So we have a lot of examples of different subjects, and you can do this with the subject you're working for. It's really easy to do. This one is about a localization graphical abstract. So you select the main points you want to show, and you give highlight you highlight them. And this is other example of point. Uh, stuff is point the bones of the rat and is the first thing you see. So this is the same example and this is an example of arrangement. So this you can see the connection between the bacteria, but you can see also the difference between them. You can see there is three groups of bacteria in this graph co abstract. It's beautiful and it's clear to understand. So the last step is the funnier one, is my favorite. It's is to do beautifully, is to make eye-catching. So at this point, you, you choose the colors, the illustrations, you choose the arrangement you use. This is an example of an infograph made at MindGraph about Parkinson's disease. So this is the final result you can get at, in MindGraph. You all can do a graphical abstract like that, not like the first one I show you reality. But yeah, it's difficult because Google doesn't have scientific illustrations available to us, really good illustrations. So normally we waste a lot of time to find it and to know how to combine them because they are really different. So yeah, it's difficult. And this is this not look professional. So we <laughs> so we have a lot of data, is our data that we love and is really important and has a lot of real knowledge. And this is why you present. So your data deserves better than that. Yeah. You spend like years study something and get data to present like that. No, we need to, to do better. So I search on Google by Swiss mouse illustrations, and that is, with, is that with I can get from Google. So yeah, it's not professional, right? I can't imagine this, this on a graphical abstract. This is the same search in MindGraph. So our goal is to create accurate and attractive scientific illustrations. So it's not to be 
Fun is not a cartoon with scientific illustrations to scientists and doctors. So now I will talk to you uh, about MindGraph. So how to do this in our platform. So MindGraph has now three years and was created by, sci by a scientist, a PhD pharmacologist, and so has a lot of scientific knowledge. We know the pain of our users. So this helps a lot because I receive emails like, oh, I need a CD4 receptor, and I know what it is. If you go to a general graphical abstract maker, the customer service will be a marketing person or a just a journalist, and they will not know what you need. So this is, whoops, sorry. Oh, it's in Portuguese, right? So you can understand a lot. Let me pass that. There's a lot of slides here. Okay, so this is an example of illustrations you can find in MindGraph. I already said this to you. We know the difference between a, a rat and a mouse. So we have a great customer success. I can tell you because I am the customer success support, so yes. And we do on-demand scientific illustrations. So the users send emails to us like, ah, I want a mouse with a sur abdominal surgery. And we do that in like three days, five days. So it's really great because they have uh, customized support. And, oh my God, the images have high quality, so you can use in posters, it not be like this way. This way is from Google, this other is from MindGraph. So you can resize and use in all you want, like books, posters, presentations. It really looks professional. And we have a lot of difference of illustrations, ethnic variations, uh, about mouses and rats, we have a lot of different colors and types. And we have six types of artwork styles. So this is a little, a little about hierarchy. So as I said to you, if your main information is about brain damage, you, 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 you will use the first one illustration because has a lot of colors and call a lot of attention. But if, you're, if this is your secondary information, like if your red line is about other thing and this is the secondary information, you use the three one images. So the headline will be the other illustration. Okay, we have over 8,000 scientific illustrations available on MindGraph, and per month we add like 100 new scientific illustrations. But is this enough? Like, I just choose a lot of scientific illustrations and put this all together, and it's beautiful. Maybe, maybe not. You need to know how to combine them, how to use the colors, how to choose uh, different illustrations. So this is an example. This is an infographic made at MindGraph. Do you like it? Yeah? No? Yeah, it's beautiful. Is it beautiful? No? What is the first thing you see when you look at? Yes, the first thing I see is the red box. Yes, like, whoa. But what is, what is the main information here? The human column, right? Okay, so this is the first one. You can change this for this. It's better now. Yes, so you, 
you remove the boxes, the pink ones and the colorful box in the right size, so you can see more the human columns and the bodies, so it's really cleaner and more eye-catching, and you can understand more. So remove these boxes that are unnecessary. You can understand without them, right? But from this, we can go to this. Is it better now? Yes, I hope so. I hope you like it more. So in this one, we change the hierarchy. So the body is the body's smaller than the human column. And we use the different artwork style that I said to you before. And we change the contrast of the circle. So it's really easier to understand now, right? When you look at it, you see the human column, right? Yes, it's your, main, it's your main information. So, but you can go from this to this. It's better because the letters has more hierarchy. So, you see first the C1, C7, and then you read cervical curvature concrete. So, you need to choose uh, what is your main information again. But you can go from this to this. Okay, that's that's the last one. So the human color human column with colors call all attention. So when you look at you see the human color first. And that's the goal. So here's the example that we need to summarize first and we need to know what is which is your main goal. So okay I need to show the human column. So you need to show the human column to them, not a lot of text, not human bodies. So this they will read after, after they will see the human column. So this is the first one, and this is the last one. And both of them uh, were created at MindGraph. So you will try and we, you will learn how to use the platform and we'll get better and better at this. So I learned a lot. I'm not a designer as well, but I learned a lot at MindGraph. And now, now I do really beautiful graphical abstracts, I think. So when I see it, I get like really proud of myself because, oh my God, my first graphical abstract was so, yeah, and this one that I'm doing right now is like really professional, and oh my God, I'm almost a designer now. <laughs> so I brought you some videos so you can see how the platform is. Because tomorrow we have a practical assignment in two workshops that I will give. So the participants will use MindGraph in their laptops, but today is just a talk. So to you understand how MindGraph works, I brought you some videos. We have a blog and a YouTube channel, and all these videos are available on our YouTube channel. So this first one is how to make this pathway, these pathways. So, okay. Yeah, there is a link, but okay, now it works. This is the platform. It's really easy to use, so it's not like an Adobe software because we need to know how to use easily. <coughs> oh. 
We have a lot of features. You can use text, you can use icons, illustrations, backgrounds. So this video shows you a little bit of what you can do at MindGraph. And I love this graphical abstract. I think it's really beautiful and it's more, this graphical abstract is not too much to talk about general audience, it's more for a scientific paper because it has a lot of biochemistry details but you can use to publish a paper or to use in a poster. So I told you I'm really good right now to do graphical abstracts. This one is really beautiful. I think, I hope you think as well. We have a lot of illustrations about pharmacology and biochemistry, so you can get specific illustrations. And if you don't find the illustration you need, subscribers can request request these illustrations and you can get these illustrations like in five days. I hope you can do a graphical abstract like that in mind the graph. So I will be really proud of you. You can send me feedbacks after and your results. So this is the final result, just choose a background. Okay, that's the final result. I think it's easy to use. You can do just like that. So okay, sorry. So this is other video and the last one and it's shorter, I promise you. Just to tell you like to use a hierarchy. So the, your main information and your secondary information.
Okay. So that's it. That's the final result. You can get a line graph as well. So let me come back to presentation. You can see more about it in your, yes. You can see a lot more on our blog and YouTube channel, and you can talk with me either. Uh, this is my thank you, or obrigada in Portuguese. So the Sick Kids Hospital, Mind the Graph, and Cafundó Studio. And Laura is my English teacher. I hope you can understood me, and I'm sorry if I said something wrong. So yes, that's it. Thank you. Okay, uh, if someone has questions, I'm here. I don't know, Grace. Yeah, there's a question up there on your right. Ah, okay. Uh, you have a microphone in front of your desk. Yes, uh, thank you for your talk, that was amazing. I have just a quick question. Is it compatible with uh, Illustrator? Because sometimes you have like more detail to add and it's not available in your- Sorry, uh, I, I didn't hear you. Uh, sorry, is those files compatible with Adobe Illustrator as well? So can I start something with uh, Mind the Graph? And then I want to add some more details on Illustrator, add up Illustrator. No, our illustrations are CF CVG format, but now, right now you can import illustrations. You can import uh, Im images and PDFs, and you can import. We are developing now, so you can import PowerPoint presentations as well to mind the graph, but illustrations, no, you can't. But we are developing PowerPoints and PDB archives, so you can import them to mind the graph. Okay. So here. Oh, I have the mic activated. <laughs> Sorry. Where are uh, you? Well, I was going to give you a little plug as well. So I was looking online at some of the pricing, and it looks like you have a oh. free version of the software yes. where you can use five illustrations and start using the, the software on your own. And then it looks like there's a student version that's about $5 a month, yes. which seems pretty reasonable. But I wanted to ask you, um, this is to use the software and to start building your own slides and designs and things like that. What if we wanted help in building a slide? If you wanted to convert that sketch that you had at the beginning to um, something that's graphical, would you guys do that? And what would you charge for something like that? Yes, we have customer support, uh, mainly to request new scientific illustrations, but when a user has some doubt uh, how to use the platform or how to organize the elements, I help them. It's just not a um, regular thing, but we do for the users, the users who want. And if the user want that, we create the graphical abstract for them. We can do that, but this has uh, another price, and this is on demand constantly, so you can send an email and try. But our goal is to empower, empower, empower scientists. So you can go to MindGraph, and you can create things like that that I showed to you. So this is our goal. But if you want that, ask that uh, request that we create uh, on-demand graphical abstract to you, we can. So about the, the free and paid plan. The free plan is limited, but you can use as long as you want. Uh, want. You can see a free user forever if you want. And it's limited, you can use just five illustrations and do just one creation per time. But you can uh, change our creations, you can use almost our features, but in a limited way. So if you want to create complex images, complex graphic abstracts with several illustrations, you need to upgrade. We have a student version that is limited but smart, has more features than the free plan and we have the researcher plan that is $15 a month and you have 
all the features, unlimited. And now we have also the lab teams, so you can share with other colleagues you're working. So you can pay $15, $5, and you can use a lot of users together. So it's great to share and to work together. Is that OK? Someone else here, I think? Sorry? Oh, yes. Yes, you can download in as PDF or PNG, and you can download in high quality. So yes. No, no, no. We don't allow to export in SVG because we want that MindGraph is a complete platform. You can create all this there. You can just import. A, PNG or uh, images the, to there, and you can download as these formats. Okay. More questions? Maybe if you could remind everyone what the workshop is tomorrow and where is it and what time. Ah, that is. okay, okay. So. Oh, sorry, I'm just going to interject here because the workshop that Fabiola is running tomorrow is part of the CPH CSQ conference, and that's why we had her come today to speak to you guys. Um, that's a limited registration conference. So it's not open to everybody, sorry. So I'm sorry to disappoint you. Yes, I'm sorry to disappoint you. But uh, my email is Fabiola, I don't know how to say Aruba, but it's Fabiola, arubamindagraph.com. So you can reach me. Uh, we, we, I will answer you like one day, the same day, so you can reach me any doubt. We'll also post the slides that were shown today in the RTC newsletter. So hopefully most of the folks in this room received the RTC newsletter. If not, you can email me directly and we can get them to Yes, I hope you really like it. And I hope this is, will help you so you can create beautiful images. Yes. That's it. <laughs> <laughs>